It's Roy Sizemore, Valley PBS. I am joined today with Jeff Aiello, the hey, uh, director. The director, creator, producer, what, whatever. The yeah, whole the the man behind Outside Beyond the Lens, one of our biggest shows here uh, on Valley PBS. And, uh, man, thank you for coming on first off. Thank you for having me. Um, this thing, like our streaming, our views, I'm on the credits for making the little promos, and I get stopped all the time. Hey, man, I saw you on, you're on out. What do you do for outside? I oh, know, it's no joke. I know, oh, I'm really? like, yeah, so okay, it was like, cool. I'm like, are you funning with me? And they're like, no, that's like our favorite show. Oh, so, that's so cool. It's very cool. Awesome. And um, you've been out and about. Uh, it shooting looks like you've been three. a little selling there. Got a little sun right now, shooting season three right now, and uh, kind of halfway done. We've got a few more shows to right. go. Uh, but in the show today, we're going to be sharing with everybody where we've been so far. And we've got a little bit of Tennessee State Parks coming at you. Okay. We've got a really cool episode from Alaska, the Kenai River, which is going to be a fishing show. Yes. You're going to like that. Um, you know me. Uh, but we went to Croatia not really? long ago, which was awesome. And I can't wait to dive into that. We're going to have Zach and Dave on a little later, too. Oh, sweet. Cool. And uh, then a really cool show that we just finished filming in the British Virgin Islands. Oh, okay. Sailing? Sailing. Ah, see, yeah. that's your thing. I'm fishing. Yep. You're sailing. Yeah, I like that's that. A, see, I like to slow down. I'm yeah, I know. And we did fishing on the sailing ship. Really? Yeah, it was kind of cool. But I told people if they caught something while we were under sail, I couldn't slow the boat down. So they were <laughs> they were just skipping these fish across the top of the water. We'll, we'll get into that later. <laughs> All right. So uh, what else you got planned? Or is, is that still up in the air? That's sort of secret. We're going to keep oh. that under wraps right now because we got some big stuff kind of planned. But uh, let's get into the show right now. And just take a look at what you got so far. Outside season three. Let's go. Sneak peek. When you travel, the world becomes a smaller place. When you explore with friends that share a love of photography, destinations come to life. This water is emerald green. We tell the stories of travel with our cameras, capturing some of the most beautiful locations on Earth. But every adventure reveals more than what's in the frame. Thunder Boomer, as we see him popping up right now. The people, the food, and unexpected turns in the journey. Now they're gonna swim right with him. <laughs> brings the full experience of travel into focus. With COVID-related travel restrictions relaxing worldwide, meant Dave, Zach, and I could get back to doing what we love, exploring the entire planet to capture the beauty of this world cinematically and document the adventures we share along the way. In early June of 2021, we decided to start things off with an early summer trip to Tennessee to film the incredible state park system found throughout the volunteer state. Like many of our journeys, this was a road trip show where we have a basic idea of where to go, but use tips from locals and people we meet along the way to guide us to locations usually found off the beaten path. Well, you don't want to slip on this trail. About two hours west of Nashville, we saw signs for a Civil War battlefield park and knew it was a worthy stop. All right, on the way to Natchez Trace State Park in, in Tennessee, Central Tennessee, and off the I-40, we saw a sign for uh, Parker's Crossroads Civil War Battlefield Park. Oh, Dave and Zach are spread out right now. There's a really cool walking tour that we're gonna do that's gonna take us through this historic battlefield. We're gonna learn a little bit more about it, specifically um, the role it played in the Civil War. And this is one of the great things about touring the South and doing road trips in the South is you have a lot of these Civil War battlefields uh, and memorial parks set up to explore. And if you're a history buff like I am, especially Civil War, um, it's hard to resist pulling over and uh, getting out and exploring these places and, and you know enriching that knowledge of history of an important part of our history, a dark part of our history. Walking in Civil War battlefield parks like this, you can't help but reflect on what actually happened here over 150 years ago. The brutal nature of close combat, the sounds that must have echoed through these woods, all of it impacted each of us in a profound way and truly inspired how we film these landscapes. Now, Zach, as someone who served in the military, what are you thinking when you're walking through a hallowed ground like this? Well, it's two things, actually. It's, it's uh, I reflect back on my experience in, in uh, Fort Benning, Georgia, which is which not too far from here. Very similar um, terrain, so that goes through my head. And But at the same time, it's also the history that you learn about in places like this. Here, here's one instance of the many that we've learned about, you know, 
lot of, lot of death, a lot of fighting, and a lot of chaos. But beyond the rich history of Civil War parks like this, Tennessee is well known for its state park system. 56 designated state parks featuring hiking trails, waterfalls, lakes, streams, and dense forests can be found across the state. Parks like Rock Island State Park, about two hours east of Nashville. Part of the deal with exploring out here in Tennessee is this like lowering of the blood pressure and lowering of your the haste and the rush and we gotta get there and just and this is perfect country to just slow down and enjoy and look around because it's look how beautiful that is out there look at that i mean that is gorgeous right now here the beautiful drive in through an absolutely gorgeous hardwood forest leads to parking areas along the caney fork below the great falls dam the limestone cliffs and thick woods combined with the green waters of the river for breathtaking views in every direction. This is simply groundwater that's just oozing out of these giant cracks in the limestone, making their way down to the blue hole here and uh, into the river. Um, the water, we talked to some locals up ahead and they said um, the water level is high right now. There's a lot of groundwater coming out. So the hike's a little tricky, but because the limestone is flat in these layers, it's pretty predictable to walk on. So we're enjoying it. There's a lot more places like this we're gonna discover in this park. And uh, so far the thing's a winter, winter chicken dinner in my book. Another big part of travel is food, and it's something we try to showcase at times on the show. We passed this spot on our way to the park, and it was packed for lunch, like nowhere to park. But a few hours later, we had it all to ourselves. Finding little back road diners like this, visiting with the folks that run them, and enjoying a Southern home style meal beats the pants off the grab and go snacks we usually hit while shooting on the show. I got, I got a chicken breast, smoked and barbecued chicken breast, some green beans, and Reina's famous mashed potatoes. This is also the kind of stick to your ribs food I like to get Zach on, since he typically wants to eat about every nine minutes. In contrast to exploring the state parks of Tennessee, we made sure to spend some time in downtown Nashville, which is an experience all its own. The bright lights, fun crowds, and country music playing from every bar along the way is why the Broadway section of town is so popular and a fun place to roll cameras. Downtown Nashville is also home to the smallest of the 56 state parks that is very worthy of a visit, Bicentennial Capitol Mall State Park. At just 19 acres, this layout of lawns, monuments, and landscaped grounds in the heart of Nashville is a great place for photography and people watching. Design elements give interesting historic information on Tennessee and at the northern end of the park is the iconic Court of Three Stars, a circular plaza representing the three grand divisions of Tennessee, three distinctive geologic and cultural areas of the state captured in the design of the state flag. The state park system in Tennessee also caters to the suburbs of large cities throughout the state, with places like Radnor Lake State Park just 10 minutes south of Nashville. Here, a series of trails winds around Radnor Lake and the 1,400-acre park. Wildlife viewing and photography are easily enjoyed along the lake trail, and with these dense hardwood forests of the south, a walk here does not feel like you're minutes away from Music City.
Roy Sizemore Valley PBS with Jeff Aiello from Outside Beyond the Lens, and uh, that was awesome. Tennessee's beautiful. It's gorgeous. We stayed in Nashville for half that shoot, okay. and, and it was, I, that was my first time in Nashville, and I loved it. It's smaller yeah. than you think, but, yeah. but but I don't know, it's just, it's a, it's cool, a cool town. It's a cool town. You're gonna see a little bit of that in the episode, too. We're gonna spend a little time showing you around Nashville, uh, but the state parks in Tennessee are amazing. They're at the same quality that a lot of national parks are in America, and so it was fun to show that off. Yeah, it's just so vast. There's so much, and there's it's it, we're so cramped here. We don't, yeah. when you look at that, you're just like, you know, that's what's so great about your show is, I'm not gonna go back to Tennessee. I'm not gonna go get to go do all this stuff, but with Outside Beyond the Lens, like we get to live through you and there, like there watching that, you and there you know, is that, all that aspect stuff. of it. Um, I also love when we hear back from viewers that were inspired to go to a place that we saw. Right. That's to me and to Zach and Dave. That's the that's music to our ears. Especially people will use an actual episode as a trip guide. And so you can watch the show and go, I'm gonna go do exactly what those guys did. And for me, uh, you know, producing a show like this for Valley PBS is really what it's all about because it's the kind of programming we can do that you can't really get away with in other places. Certainly commercial television too. And so I just love, I love the, what we're doing here and I love the support we have from the show. And if you love shows like this, right. this is where we say, hey, we need your help. We want your help. We want you to support what we're doing here, and this is what this is what this is all about. Yeah, I mean the, um, the all, all the all the, the things we hear and all the, the like you know, streams of your show of like you know jumping through the roof, you know, and ba and having you based out of here. Yeah. And this is like your home base, yeah. and, and I'm just glad Valley PBS is where your home base, because yeah. you're on everywhere now, and you're going everywhere, and we're just living vicariously through you, man. Hey, man, it's fun. <laughs> we're having a good time, and we're glad, and we got some more great stuff to show you guys. Well, Tennessee looked awesome, man. Uh, what are we looking at next? Alaska is one of my favorite places to shoot. We go there often. We've been going for years. Uh, but this season, we shot on the Kenai River in Alaska in a very special kind of way you're going to see, and I can't wait to show you that. Underwater. Not underwater. It'd be a little too cold. But a little bit a much. Cool, heartfelt story that I think is going to catch you off, catch you off guard a little. All right, we're going to look at that here in just a bit. But um, right now, I want to take it over to Robert. Robert's going to tell us about some of the fun stuff we got for you. Some thank you gifts for becoming part of the Valley PBS family and help supporting shows like your show and uh, outside you know, merch time. <laughs> outside merch time. Let's do it. Thank you, Roy, and thank you, Jeff, and thank all of you for watching this very special episode of Outside Beyond the Lens, a glimpse of what you have to look forward to in season three of the program. And you know, Jeff and the team are traveling all over the world, and they have so many other places that they want to go. And with your support, they're going to be able to take you with them. But please, make that gift right now and show your support for these wonderful travel programs we offer here at Valley PBS. It's easy to do. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 1-800-801-6500 or log on to valleypbs.org slash donate. And a third and easy way is simply to take a photo of the QR code that you see right there on the screen. That'll take you right to our website and you can make your gift right now. And when you do make that gift, we have some great ways to say thank you. For a gift of $10 a month sustaining or a $120 annual gift, you'll get the Outside Beyond the Lens Ripstop Trail Backpack. This is great for any traveler. For a gift of $15 a month sustaining or a one-time gift of $180, you'll get the Outside Beyond the Lens Columbia Bora Bora Hat. Essentially, especially here in the valley, when you're hiking, gardening, or doing any outside activities, you gotta have that hat. And for $15 a month, or a one-time gift of $180, the Outside Beyond the Lens hat will be yours. And finally, for a $20 monthly sustaining gift, or a $240 one-time gift, you'll get both the Columbia hat and the Outside Beyond the Lens backpack not only that, but remember, when you become a member of PBS, you also get Passport, which opens the vaults to hundreds and hundreds of programs that you might have missed. So please, pick up the phone and make that gift right now and show your support for programs just like the one you're watching right now. It's easy to do. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 1-800-801-6500. Log on to valleypbs.org slash donate or simply scan the QR code right there on the screen and it'll take you right to our easy to navigate website. Now, let's get back to Jeff and the team with Outside Beyond the Lens.
Of all the places we've shot around the world, Alaska will always be one of our favorites. It is sprawling and wild and pure, and because of that, Alaska is its own world with countless destinations within it to explore. All different, but all with one thing in common. Most of the state is free of humankind's heavy touch. Our trip to Alaska's Kenai River this summer was inspired by something you might not expect. The tragic loss of a life too soon. The son of a friend who passed suddenly just as he was truly beginning to live his life. The family built this amazing resort right on the banks of the Kenai to honor their son Cameron's love for Alaska and fishing these amazing waters. Here, the salmon run strong like they always have. So Dave, Zach, and me, along with a few friends and family who've never seen Alaska, came here to tell the story of how this place came to be and to photograph the beauty of the Kenai Peninsula. What we're doing here is fishing for sockeye and silver salmon that are coming up the Kenai River to spawn right now. We're in mid-August here. This is the time when, actually a little earlier than this is when the salmon really start running. And we are doing what's called flossing. So we're using a fly rod with a big weight on it. And basically all we do is just sort of flip the weight. About eight feet behind the weight is a hook with a piece of bright orange yarn on it. And if the salmon are there, it's not uncommon to get a hookup almost on every cast. But right now, because we have the camera rolling, we're not gonna have that. Since the fish weren't quite awake yet, we made a plan to see what nearby Soldotna, Alaska had in the way of hiking trails at a preserve nearby. A quick search online led us here to the Kenai National Wildlife Refuge, just a five minute drive from the lodge. One of the things I love about hiking here in the Kenai Peninsula in Alaska is even the smallest trail, not even far from where we've parked and we're already lost in this beautiful temperate forest. Uh, we've got Devil's Club popping up everywhere with their bright red berries right now. There's some uh, elderberry in here. The trail itself is really well maintained, easy to walk and there's a cool breeze blowing. It's just heavenly right now. Summers in Alaska can be amazingly beautiful as far as weather goes, and we're having that today for sure. This is a great little hike and a great little escape, and if you've never been and hiked in Alaska, this is a great introduction into what it can be like without really going far off trail and really you know, investing a lot of time and energy into a, a, a longer adventure. This is, these little hikes right around the visitor center here are perfect. A trip to the Kenai Peninsula wouldn't be complete with at least a one day run to the fun fishing village of Homer, Alaska. We took a day trip down to Homer from Soldotna, about a two hour drive, but hit it on a day that was really foggy so we couldn't see the gorgeous mountains that framed the bay. The main spit that juts out into Kachemak Bay is a popular tourist attraction with shops, restaurants, and places to watch the summer halibut fishermen come in with their catch. It's also a fun place to mingle with the locals, who in this part of the world are usually interesting characters. I'm from New Hampshire, originally. No kidding. Yeah. I first came here in 84. And you stayed? No, but I knew I was gonna live here. I, I came here when I was 43, divorced the second time, and started a new life. And my, it's a very common story here. What part is this, the, we call this the spit. Where, where are we right now? It's actually called the it's spit. It's actually called the and spit. And in 1962, in an earthquake, 64. it was actually inundated with salt water, and, and, the, it and the took trees a long died. time for actually for grass to grow again. Okay, well, so, so and this is the main barrier between the Pacific Ocean and the, and the harbor? Is that right? Well, kinda. We just landed here, just got here today, just drove in. We got, we got, we're shooting around, in fact, Dave and Zach are somewhere. I haven't even seen, did you guys see Dave or Zach? Not he, a hide nor hair. You don't even know Dave or Zach? No. Didn't even know him. Okay, all right. Well, I'm glad I met you guys because now I have a little bit better feeling on what to do, including going to the Salty Dog. So we're gonna head there next. This place is a Homer, Alaska landmark. Not only is it filled with a lot of history and some really good drinks, it's well known for its interior decorating, which as you can see here, 
is basically a lot of dollar bills hanging everywhere from every corner, making a stop here to grab a quick beer like sitting in some kind of weird cave. That's cool. The Kenai River is considered one of the premier salmon fishing rivers in the world. The amount of fish that come in, the beauty of the river itself, and its accessibility for anglers makes it a bucket list destination for fishing, and for us, an amazing place for photography. But the river is also home to monster rainbow trout that become huge feeding on salmon eggs during the summer spawn. To try our luck on hooking one of these once in a lifetime fish, we turn to a local guide who knows the Kenai like the back of his hand. Ian McDonald and his trusty sidekick Bones have been guiding fishing trips on the upper Kenai for years. Bones, come here, come on. Ian is taking us up to the headwaters of the Kenai as it flows from Skelak Lake. Up here, now on the lake's surface, the waters are calm with barely a breath of wind and we are surrounded by sockeye salmon feeding near the surface. Okay, well, what you're seeing right here, folks, is what we call in the fishing world a double, meaning uh, Ian put us in a really good spot and uh, we've got two hookups. So Jeff and Conley are both hooked up on sockeyes. Got them. <laughs> the spirit in which Cam's Kenai Riverfront Lodge was born from is alive and well here today, even after Cam is gone. On a post of the pavilion that covers the fire pit, visitors leave fishing lures and hooks with a quiet memory they made while here. A wonderful tradition to honor Cam's love for this place and to always keep him close to this river. Back on the Kenai, just below the lodge, the sockeyes are finally in, and tight lines are many in the summer sun. Dave and Zach have been filming the action, but it occurred to me that neither have ever caught a salmon, let alone using a fly rod, so they put the cameras down for a bit to get into the fight. It didn't take long for both of them to hook up. We saw it, I saw it, I saw it. Okay, okay now, get him on his reel. Get him on the reel, get him on the reel. Zach! Okay, 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 okay. Now you're fighting him. Now oh my God. Now hold up, hold, hold him on the reel. Now go, let him go, let him go. Let the reel, let the line go. Watch it high. He's gonna go. <laughs> he's got a piece. You let him go? No, he's going downtown on you. Hang on a second. Oh. But, he's gonna, oh. he's gonna run, he's gonna run. Okay, this is gonna take a while because you're into the freaking hog. No, he's a hog. He's a full-fledged hog. <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on. Pick, pick him up, pick him up. Got him. Hold on, hold on. Oh. <laughs> Zachariah, welcome to Salmon Town. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Wow. Roy Sizemore, Valley PBS, and uh, now we got the guys in. We kicked Jeff out. Um, yeah, this is awesome. Uh, outside Beyond Lens sneak peek show. Nice catch. Is that your first uh, big oh, salmon? Oh, yeah. first off, I'm sorry. For those who don't watch the show, this is Zach and Boomer. I don't know if you guys want to do your full names or just go by your show names. Oh, that's good. Okay, Zach, that's yeah, good. Zach. Boomer's yeah. good. Boomer's good. <laughs> is that your first big salmon or first That ever? was uh, for a soccer. I, I never you know, caught a fish that big. I, when I grew up, I got little minnows about that big. That, <laughs> that was that was a uh, that was an experience, experience for sure. Every time I watch, I'm a big fishing guy. Everybody knows that. I'm a bass guy, but every time I watch this, I just very just super envious of you guys, especially yeah. these Alaska shows and all the wildlife shows. And uh, what was that like? I mean, did it were it, you scared a little bit? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I had to put the camera down a little bit just so here, grab this rod, take take you know, take a couple uh, tries at it, and, and I don't know, second or third try, it, it hooked it up, and then I was just like, now what? <laughs> yeah, and he's like, well, hold on, he's sitting there behind me, coaching me, coaching me, and everybody was behind me. And, on a fly rod. No yeah, Jill behind oh. me whispering in my ear, don't mess it up, don't mess it up, don't lose it. Don't lose it. <laughs> you know, and Jeff's like, hold on, just, just keep it there, you got it, you got it. And, and um, it, it went well. It, well I mean, it that's, came in. And to go out and do what you guys do, how long have you guys been shooting with Jeff, by the way? Um, how long have you been doing uh, the show, or even prior to uh, Outside Beyond the Lens? Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've, I've known him for almost 10 years now, working with various shows and different, uh, you know, occupations, I guess. But uh, shooting with him for, for outside has been about two years now, I think. That's, yeah. 
Yeah, I've, I've been shooting with Jeff, I think since 09. We started uh, our first show, and uh, we've been doing Outside Beyond the Lens now for a few few years, so yeah, we've, we've got some history. It's a great job to have. I'm watching you guys, and I'm like, look at this. I know, but I do know also the stuff no one else sees, and no one watching right now knows all the stuff that goes on behind. But I do, I do have some questions now that Jeff's not here. One thing I've noticed as I'm watching the show, and I'm shooting this to Jeff, if he's home watching this, here's the question. Uh, um, He's in this big, nice van, and then there's these little tents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's up with that? Well, and you're like, <laughs> it, it, he, he might, you just don't want to sleep with with the guy. You know, he, he might, he might be a, hard. You know. Is this a, yeah. Does he bring it, more than one pair of socks? As, you know? it, it smells better outside my own tent. I'll well, I just, when I was watching, I'm like, why is he putting that big tall fella in the tent over there? Like, it seems yeah. like a lot. I mean, we could we could all pile in there, but I think uh, Zach and I figured out early on that. Um, you know. We appreciate our space, and we don't need yeah. a nice comfy mattress right. to be comfortable out in the woods. So you're saying he's soft. <laughs> I get it. Jeff, Jeff Ayala is soft. He, he, he acts it. like he kicks us out and everything. I'll, I'll, right. I'll, I'll plead the fifth on some of this. But have you ever had any, like, super bad weather? Because you, you guys have gone, like, literally not just around the United States. You guys, go, you guys go all over the world, man. Like, we're glued to our sets watching you guys on these adventures every week. So, like, have you ever had something like really torrential rain or snow or... I, I know Boomer has. Yeah, I mean, we've seen some pretty bad weather. Uh, it's been a few years, but yeah, yeah, we've we've weathered some thunderstorms and uh, in the High Sierra, and yeah, it's uh, yeah. We've had some crazy, crazy yeah. moments. That's where I'm like, yeah, that tent looks so fun, man. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> a lot of times it's part of it. In his, yeah. in his defense, when that does happen, he does he, 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 he does take good care of us and hooks up on the nice little. Let you sit in the front seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sit in the front seat, turn the radio on or our, our station. Yeah. So uh, Croatia, we're gonna look at that next. Wait, were you in tents in Croatia too? Were you? We were uh, not in tents. <laughs> <laughs> Five to seven star tents. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, very nice. Well, we got <laughs> Croatia coming up. But before we get to that, I want to take it over to Robert right now. Bobby is going to tell you all about some fun gifts we got for you uh, for becoming part of Valley PBS family and supporting shows like Outside Beyond the Lens and all the other programming we do for you right here at Valley PBS. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Roy, and thank you to the team of Outside Beyond the Lens. You know, when you watch this program, you really feel like you're the fourth person on their adventures. And they want to continue to bring you on their adventures. And with your support, we can do just that. Simply pick up the phone and give us a call right now during this program, 1-800-801-6500. Log on to valleypbs.org slash donate or simply scan the QR code right there on your screen. And when you do, remember we have some fantastic outside beyond the lens gifts for a gift of $10 a month sustaining or $120 annual gift. You'll get the outside beyond the lens packable trail bag for a gift of $15 a month sustaining or a $180 annual gift. You'll get the Columbia Bora Bora outside beyond the lens hat. And for your gift of $20 a month sustaining or a $240 annual gift, you'll get both the backpack and the hat. And remember, when you make that gift, you also become a member of Passport, which opens the vault of thousands of programs right there on your smart tablet or phone at your convenience. So please make that gift right now, 1-800-801-6500. Log on to valleypbs.org slash donate or simply scan this QR code right there on your screen and it'll take you right to our easy to navigate website. And now let's get back to the team with Outside Beyond the Lens. Travel restrictions relaxing worldwide. International travel opened back up for us in 2021. At the beginning of the pandemic in early 2020, we had planned a trip to Croatia that was canceled several times due to COVID. But in the fall of 2021, the planets lined up and it was time to pack up gear and finally make the journey. Most of the tourism crowd to Croatia hits the central and southern coastline 
in places like Split and Dubrovnik. But we wanted to see another side of this historic and inviting country, so we planned a photographic adventure to Croatia's capital, Zagreb, and then on to the charms of the Istria region of northern Croatia. Okay, well, this is our first full day in uh, Zagreb, and uh, it's good. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. There isn't a cloud in the sky. It's high 60s right now. Zach, Dave, and I are just walking around the city center, the main square area, the cathedral behind us, the farmer's market going on in the morning down here. Everything you think you're gonna see when you come to one of these great European capitals like Zagreb, it's here in living color and we're enjoying it. It's just beautiful. It's a great vibe here too. The vibe here is just, uh, people are happy. It's a clean city. Uh, virtually zero crime here and everybody's in a good mood and there's a good reason why when you walk around and you see this place and you see the vibrancy of it it makes you very happy to be here the cobblestone alleys the open air markets in the town square and a busy but not hectic pace was a perfect way to spend the day and a perfect place to do what we love cinematically filming destinations like this to try and grab the true essence of what these places are like. I'm telling you what, I'm, for photography, Zagreb is beautiful everywhere you turn. I mean, we almost shot, we could, we could easily have shot a whole episode just this morning, and somehow we still have to fit six more, seven more days of filming into this one, so I don't know how we're gonna do that. How are we gonna do that? I don't know. Well, it's gonna require a lot of editing and tears on my keyboard, but we're gonna get it done. After one full day in Zagreb, it was time to head towards the Istria region of Croatia to explore its Tuscany-like landscape and stunning seaside towns. Places like Pula on the shores of the Adriatic Sea. You get a real sense of history of Croatia when you visit a place like Pula and one of its most well-known landmarks, the Pula Arena. Construction on this Roman-style Colosseum began 27 years before the birth of Christ and was completed in 68 AD by Roman Emperor Titus. It's one of the best-preserved Roman amphitheaters in the world, retaining its complete circuit of walls. We hooked up with the local guide, Igor, to give us a closer look at the Pula Arena. 1906. Okay, so we are... Now with our Pisenta. friend here, he's showing us. We, look at look at this. We're walking on. This is hallowed ground. This yeah. is like hallowed ground, man. Yes, it is. I mean, yes, talk to me. What are we looking at here? What is what is this place? This is our Roman amphitheater, called arena. Because arena is this around you. Arena, a Latin term, means sand. Sand absorbs the blood because of gladiators. Yep, lots of crazy and brutal gladiator stuff happened here until the 5th century when the deadly games were banned. Another Pula Arena game I'm having trouble with right now is keeping up with Igor. He's so passionate and excited to share the history of his hometown with us, he's forgetting we're trying to shoot a TV show and not even stopping long enough for me to roll on anything other than me following him at a very fast pace. So, when in Rome, or Pula in this case, it's best to just roll with the punches and try to keep up. And people people with a death sentence for crimes would be put in here with animals too, correct? No, no, no. no I read no. that. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. on Wikipedia. It's okay, got to be true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you not entertained? <laughs> you have to say that here. <laughs> it's very corny and very cheesy, but yeah. I'm glad I did it. I had to scratch that itch. Further inland, the countryside of Croatia's Istria region is a landscape of rolling hills dotted with vineyards and farms, quaint villages, and one of our favorite new places in the world, the hilltop castle and town of Motovun. Present day Motovun is built on the site where a medieval Celtic fortress once stood. Today, the village is home to just over 500 people who live and work in this magical setting overlooking the wine country of Istria. 
a walk up these cobblestone streets to the castle and church atop Motovun is one of those experiences that will stay with you for a lifetime. Is it like corkscrew all the way up? Narrow, it's tight. Nice. It's really tight. I don't know if Big Daddy can get in there. <laughs> hey, hey. I want to get Zach walking in here. This is going to be hilarious because Zach's a tall drink of water. <laughs> and uh, this is built a long time ago. Get it done. You ready? We'll get it done. I got it. You going in? Okay. Wait, wait, okay. <laughs> well, I can go on fours. Yeah, go. Let's see what you got. Watch this. <laughs> it's tight. That is tight. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to fit in here, to be honest with you. And the views from the top of the castle of Istria's world famous vineyards and wineries below is a photographer's dream. What do you think, buddy? Oh, man. <laughs> Oh man, look at the village from here down below. Now, when you travel to Europe, and specifically a place like Croatia, two things always stand out. The quality of the hotels and accommodations are some of the best in the world, and the food here is a solid reason to travel to Croatia all by itself. We're getting ready for, we're getting ready for warfare here. Yep. We were lucky enough to have an expert in both as our guide on this trip, Eva, who took great care of us the entire time. You know what, Zach, you need that more often than you think you do. Okay, so Zach and I are bibbed up as uh, as Dave and Eva are. And, uh, <laughs> bib bros. Yeah, we're bib bros, and we're ready to dump, jump into some beautiful lobster. And what's the pasta, Eva? It's tagliatella. Tagliatella. Mm -hmm. All right, going to get in there. And as we found out, Eva knows hospitality and food. I mean, she literally has a PhD in it. Get in there, you guys. Let's see what we got. Zach, of course. That, that whole fingers. that whole lady's first thing doesn't really work in yeah, Zach's. Yeah, I know. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're ready. Thank you. Voila. Here we go. Homemade pasta and shrimp scampi. We've got some octopus, tuna tartare. That's cod pate. I'm looking forward to trying that. Eva, what's the name of this park? Park Maximir. Maximir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, at the park Maximir, there's this awesome ice cream stand. So I went with the Lino Lada, and uh, you went with I the. I went with this one, the you, Capri. The Capri. Mm -hmm. And I and it's good. Uh, you gave me a little bite. It was tasty. It's but delicious. It's delicious. But uh, David, let's go see David and Zach. Because now they're over here. Look at they're over here just standing here just chowing. Chowing, chowing. What would you think? What did you think of the? It's rich. To me, it's the best ice cream on a stick rich. I've ever had. I've never had ice cream on a stick that I, good. That's fair to say. It is. I, uh, is what did you think, mm -hmm. Dave? So so you, he got the. No, it, it, it's it's really good. It's the best ice cream we've had since the chow wagon. <laughs> Of all the places we visited on our eight-day run to Croatia, this one was our favorite. The picturesque city of Rovin on the shores of the North Adriatic and a superstar destination of the Istrian Peninsula. The Venice Italy-like vibe of Rovin called to us to explore from the views we had at the stunning Grand Park Hotel across the bay. As we walked past the seaside restaurants and cafes towards the town center, a spell began to fall on us all. The people and beauty of this place deserved a patient and deliberate approach to how we filmed here. So, Dave, Zach, and I split up and each wandered into our own experience of what Rovine meant to us individually. I love when we shoot like this because each of us has our own way of communicating the location photographically. And it's always fun to see how those different perspectives come together to tell one story. Well, I gotta tell you, just walking around here in the streets of Rovine as I make my way up to the church, kind of broke away from Dave and Zach and Eva. 
we all were kind of we all kind of got into our own mojo and that happens sometimes when we're shooting out here and in a place like this I think each person wants to just kind of have their own experience so that's what uh, we've all sort of done without even talking about it vacationers are light the traffic vacation traffic is kind of light we're kind of past the season right now but you know any of these towns in Europe that you come to have their own charm. This one, Rovin, has a very special charm. It's a favorite place for people in Croatia to come on vacation. Uh, as you can see, it's just beautiful. And so I'm going to make my way up to the church. <laughs> not sure. There's no map. I'm not going to my phone for GPS on this one. So far, Rovin has been my favorite stop here in Croatia. It is beautiful. Wow, those are some uh, those are some nice tents there, fellas. Nice tents, <laughs> nice tents. Got their own pool in the back. <laughs> yeah, they, they were nice. The cement pond, yeah. <laughs> the uh, We were there as guests sort of at the Croatian Tourism Board, so they put us up in some great places. Wow, yeah. yeah. Nicer than we ever normally stay, by that, It was pretty amazing. Yeah, we never, with this show, we never stay in places like that. Right. Um, the guys are on the ground in the tent, usually. And not just that, but fed us well, too. Oh, we amazing. ate the greatest food, man. Yeah. We ate the what did they eat over there? A lot, a lot of fish. A lot of fish. A lot of fish. Yeah. You're right next fish. to the Adriatic, so yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So meals an event, by the way, too. It's it's not. You don't sit down for like a half an hour and eat. You, it's in a three-hour like event each time they eat. Like courses, or are you yeah. doing like yeah. courses? Yeah. And they really, they, there's they really treasure their dining experiences. Mm -hmm. Here we sit down and it's like whack whack whack, it's gone. Right. There it's like everything is really slowed down. It is slowed. Which down. is why we didn't yeah. see a lot of overweight people, I think, too, walking around Croatia. I've been around. To, I've done a little bit of traveling. This is yeah. another reason why I love the show. Yeah. Is, um, but yeah, they. I've been in other places where yeah, it's like they do the big long dinners and everyone. It's more of a quality of life than a quantity type thing. Absolutely. And I get that vibe. And that's what's also great about your show is, not only is it a show, a travel show, but it's not like a travel show because then I'm also seeing you shoot him shooting that. Does that make sense? It's like it a does. show about a show. It's, it's, like, it it's like a Seinfeld the vibe of a That's show. That's exactly almost. what it is. Like, we, yeah. we tell people it's a show about making a travel show. You know, there you go. Exactly. We're there to film the beauty of the place. Right. That's why we're there. And then we always break the fourth wall, so to speak, and show us actually, because a lot of stuff happens that's unplanned. Yeah, that's there's right. a little bit of chemistry yeah. within the... Yeah. You know, what was your guys' country. favorite part of Croatia? Like, of all the things we saw, what was your favorite oh, part? Man, I would have to say uh, just walking around Ravine. Ravine, yeah. Ravine was amazing. Is that an actual Pachia. Ravine? or the town repeat. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to clear it up. Cobblestone yeah. streets and really cool alleyways and beautiful churches. Ancient and city on a hill. It's, yeah. just, it was it's amazing stuff. when you travel, you see how old old buildings. Oh, it's, it's, it's so amazing. What was yours, was that? Um, I think uh, running around with all of our gear after um, chasing down. Uh, well, we, sh we shot this... Um, this Coliseum in, in um, Pula. In, in Pula. Mm -hmm. And after that, we were, we were following our tour guide around town trying to find a better spot. And we, that, that was my favorite part because it was just like, <laughs> running guys. Just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy it's going like, through the town trying yeah. to chase down Jeff or where we're going. And it, it was just fun. We just saw like a lot. Like gorilla filmmakers. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. we do it. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool, man. <laughs> uh, well, coming up, we're going to take you to uh, Virgin. The last, the last place yeah. we really got to British Virgin Islands. So we went and I went and shot that show without the guys. It was kind of part of a work, kind of a vacation thing that we had planned for a long time. And so uh, I love to sail. I love the British Virgin Islands. Dave and I have been there before when we shot right. a different show before. And I wanted to show people how beautiful that uh, that Caribbean tropical paradise is. Great. We're going to take a look at that. But first, we're going to talk to Bobby. And he's going to tell you how you can become part of the Valley PBS family and help support shows just like Outside Beyond the Lens. Thank you, Roy. And again, thank you to the team of Outside Beyond the Lens, Jeff, Zach, and Boomer. You know, without your support, these programs wouldn't be made possible. So thank you, viewers at home, for your support of Valley PBS. By picking up the phone and giving us a call right now, you're saying you want to see more programs just like the one you're watching. So please, pick up the phone, give us a call at 1-800-801-6500, or log on to our website at valleypbs.org donate. And last, you can also scan the QR code right there on the screen and make your gift right now. When you make that gift, you're saying you want to see more outside beyond the lens. You want to see more travel shows. You want Valley PBS to take you around the world. And we want to do just that. And we will continue to do that with your support. So please pick up the phone, go online and make that gift right now. Now, remember, when you make that gift during this program, we have some great ways to say thank you. 
For a $10 monthly sustaining gift or just a $120 annual gift, you'll receive the Outside Beyond the Lens Ripstop Trail Backpack. For just $15 a month sustaining or $180 annual gift, you'll get the Columbia Bora Bora hat. And for a gift of $20 a month or $240 annually, you'll receive both the hat and the backpack. Those are some great gifts, but most importantly, remember when you make a gift to Valley PBS, you're supporting the programs that you love. So please take this opportunity and make that gift right now. It's easy to do. Just pick up the phone and give us a call right now at 1-800-801-6500. Log on to valleypbs.org slash donate, or just simply take your smartphone and scan the QR code on the screen and it'll take you right to our website. Please show your support for Valley PBS and your support for programs just like the one you're watching outside Beyond the Lens. Make that gift right now and we look forward to bringing you more wonderful episodes of this program and others. But it only can be made possible with your support, so please make that gift right now. Again, 1-800-801-6500. Log on to valleypbs.org slash donate or scan the QR code right there on your screen and it'll take you to our easy to navigate website. Now, let's get back to Outside Beyond the Lens. Our last sneak peek of what's coming in season three of Outside Beyond the Lens this spring is a special one for me. I love to sail, and I fell hard for the British Virgin Islands as a place to do just that eight years ago when I was here working on another project. I wanted to take my wife Jill back to see this incredible island group in the Caribbean and wanted to sail here with some close friends you may have seen before on the show. After a red-eye flight from the west coast to St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands and a fun night on island to rest up, our group of 11 piled in a van to head to the dock for the private water taxi ride to the island of Tortola in the BVIs. Doing? We're packed in here like a bunch of sardines, but that's part of the fun. That's part of the fun. Right? I would, right. It is part of the fun. It's also good that it's not super humid outside today. Oh. <laughs> is that good? No, it really is humid. You're wearing a tank top. Uh, and pookie shells. <laughs> that doesn't <it> safe to wear <laughs> I wanted to, just in case any islanders out there were going to wonder if I was a local or not, I put on pookie shells to confirm that I was out of, <laughs> out of town. Right. Confirm the two on bad. <laughs> Now you can take the ferry from Red Hook and St. Thomas over to Tortola to clear customs and COVID protocols. But when we took this trip in late October, there was only one ferry running a day and it gets packed. So the customs COVID lines are sort of counterintuitive to the whole social distancing thing. For a few extra bucks, we booked with Dolphin Water Taxi, who were great by the way, for a private and speedy run over to the West End port on Tortola. One of the things I love doing out here is looking at all the boats. We're, we're boat people. We love boats. We love sailboats in particular. And uh, so this is a great place just to gawk at all the, all the nice, beautiful catamarans, monohulls, all the boats out here. The high-speed Miami Vice run past beautiful St. John in the U.S. Virgin Islands gave our first-timers a nice look at how absolutely perfect this place is. And when we got to Tortola, our boat captain took our passports and VAX records inside to do all the paperwork for us. After a 10 minute rapid COVID test and negative results all around, we headed down the coast to Roadtown, the capital of the BVIs, and arrived at Conk Charters, our boat outfitters for the eight day trip we had planned. I've sailed with conch charters before, and they are the kind of people you want to work with on a trip like this. They have a great fleet of sailboats to charter, and when we arrived, we're getting our two 48-foot leopard catamarans ready for our journey. After grabbing a quick lunch at the restaurant right next door, it's time to head to the nearby grocery store to stock up on provisions we'll need for the week. All right, so we're gonna make, this is kind of like a running of the gauntlet, single file, single file. We're going to the grocery store. Um, but you gotta drag this cart, and the roads here are really narrow. And so, uh, and they drive on the opposite side of the street than we're used to in America. 
and you can kind of see I'm watching the footage. Ow! This place is a little wacky. Okay, we're good, we're good. We got a little bubble there. Now, if you want to skip this part, you can order all your provisions online and have it delivered to your charter. But we had a few hours to kill while our boats were getting ready, so we decided to make this part of the adventure, which it definitely was. Provisioning. Provisioning. I'm going to follow you right in. Okay, follow me in. Now you're doing absolutely nothing. Now. Except shooting a TV show. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> which really isn't that hard. So it's a lot of work that first day getting here. We got here, we waited for the charter to be cleaned up and ready to go and re-outfitted for us. Meanwhile, as you saw, we took a, we took a ride up to the, uh, the grocery store, loaded up, got all the provisions now loaded in to the boat and we'll start putting it all away, taking an inventory because somebody's gonna say, why didn't you get this? Or why didn't you get that? Or why did you buy Insure when you're 50, 40 oh, years old. <laughs> and so, <laughs> that's where Mark's that. them. And so, that's 50 bucks right there. There's some reasons. We'll get into that later. I might put an like, infographic on the screen or something. In the full episode of this Seaborn photo adventure coming in the spring, we're going to really dive into each of the stops we made and detail trip routes. So, those of you watching that want to do this journey for yourselves will have a resource to help you plan. For this preview special, we're just showing off some of the highlights, or lowlights, if you consider what happened on Halloween night at the world-famous Foxy's Beach Bar on Joss Van Dyke. Okay, so we're up on a Monday morning, uh, the day after Thanksgiving, no. <laughs> we're up on a Monday morning, the day after Halloween at Foxy's, which was fun, we had a good time there last night. Now what we're doing right now is um, somewhat, I'm not gonna say nerve wracking, but we're all paying attention a lot it's right now. It's nerve wracking. It's nerve wracking. <laughs> we, are, we are bringing uh, the Kathmandu into a dock for the first time. So right now the winds are pretty light to variable. Um, we think we know what we do, we're doing here. Brian's we've, been doing a good job of... We've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. That so, helps. So we're checked out. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, we're bringing this 48-foot beautiful leopard in very carefully. Even though these catamarans are big, there's a lot of room out here to maneuver. But you still need some good on-water experience to bareboat charter out here, like we're doing on the Katmandu. Conk Charters also provides boat captains if sailing isn't your thing. I'm ready to have a beer and let you, let you take over. We did the clockwise run around the entire British island archipelago, hitting the usual stops, like snorkeling at Monkey Point on Guana Island. Although the day we were here, conditions were not the usual crystal clear below surface visibility due to a north swell coming in, but that was okay, because it led to us grabbing a mooring ball at White Beach just down the coast, and for us, the discovery of an amazing stretch of tropical sand and water we'll never forget. For me, the highlight of this trip was sailing the 12 miles out to Anagata Island, the one British Virgin Island not part of the main island group. When you set out for Anagata, you can't see it on the horizon because the tallest point on the island is about five feet above sea level. But the navigation systems and GPS aboard Kathmandu show us the way. The gang had a lot of fun catching mackerel, small tuna, and a few barracudas on the way to Anagata. And once we grabbed our mooring ball for the night, a quick dinghy ride to shore and a short walk to the scooter shop transformed our motley crew of scallywags into a full-fledged biker gang. Exploring Anagata like this and hitting musty stops like Cowrec Beach and the Anagata Beach Club are a fun way to break up time on the boat. The entire BVI experience, especially shared with people you love, is a magical way to see the Caribbean, even when the occasional downpour hits. 
I can't wait to share this entire journey with our viewers and the amazing seascapes we captured along the way. From jumping off the famous Willie T party ship on Norman Island to snorkeling the wreck of the HMS Roan and exploring the granite grottos of the baths on Virgin Gorda. All of it built memories we'll all share for a lifetime. But the one thing that will always stick with me are the sunrises over the British Virgin Islands. Getting up early, making some coffee, and just sitting in the warm tropical breeze waiting to see what grand show awaits is a ritual I love when visiting here and something I always miss long after I return home. On behalf of Zach, David, Jill, and the entire Valley PBS team, I want to thank you all for checking out our season three preview and for supporting Outside Beyond the Lens and Valley PBS. If you watch the show and love coming along with us on these adventures, call, scan the QR code, or go online and be a part of helping us continue to produce shows like Outside Beyond the Lens on Valley PBS. We've got some exciting destinations and photo adventures still coming for season three. We can't wait to begin the journey this spring, right here on the station where the stories of the valley and beyond are told. Valley PBS.